Hey everyone, how's it going? Um, I want to do a video on the, uh, the Samsung Galaxy Note. Um, first of all, I do have to start off saying, uh, apologizing for the editing. Uh, I kind of did a run of this video and it got really, really long. Um, apparently I have a lot to say. So I'm going to be cutting out bits and pieces, trying to compress it down, trying to, trying to keep the run time down so that I can say everything I want to say without you getting horribly bored. So, uh, when it jumps around, I'm not the best video editor, so hopefully you can, uh, hopefully you're alright with it. I've had the Galaxy Note for a while. I've had it since the original release date, the European release date. I have the International Note, obviously. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll start off by saying that I absolutely uh, adore this phone. I think it's fantastic. And for how I work, what I do, it's pretty close to perfect for me. So I've been interested in... in uh, I, and I understand full well that this is a niche device. So I've been very curious of how the general public has uh, regarded this, this, uh, this phone. And so I've been watching many videos almost every video in fact about it uh, so I've seen tons of unboxing videos um, in fact I'm quite sick of unboxing videos and you have your first impression videos from IFA and CES and then you have your reviewers who review the phone um, but most of them only use the phone for a couple days you know they have a lot of phones to review so they don't really have the time, the luxury to spend that much time with the Note. Um, so I found that there are things I want to say about this, the, the phone that um, no one else seems to be saying. And I wanted to approach it from the angle of someone who has actually used it uh, a lot on a day-to-day -day basis. And you know, give you an understanding of what that is. Because we all know the Note is an extreme device. Oh yeah, by the way, this is not a true review in the sense that I'm not going to go through specifications. I'm not going to do a walkthrough of the hardware. Um, this video assumes that you are familiar with that. If you are not, then you really should go watch a real review uh, and then come back. Uh, and that way you have a better idea of, of what I'm talking about, to be honest with. So, we all know the Note is different. It is pretty much the biggest smartphone out there. Uh, the closest second is really only the Dell Streak, and that got discontinued a bit ago, so most people have not even seen one. And, you know, as far as your common everyday smartphone, this is by far much bigger. Uh, as far as being a tablet goes, it is much smaller than your conventional tablet. So, my, my basic point is, this is the device that you need to kind of get used to. And first impressions are very misleading, I find. And so, that's part of why I wanted to do this review. You know, I think one of the first questions everyone always asks is, is it a phone or is it a tablet? And it's clearly both. Um, you know, it has an earpiece, it has a mouthpiece, it has a phone number. It is a phone. Okay. Period. Um, is it a tablet? Well, let's be honest now. A ta tablet computer has been around for a long time. Alright. If it is a computer, it has an operating system. If you can install programs, it is a computer. If the primary input and output of the device is through a touch screen, then it is a tablet. So, yes, it is a tablet. Okay, the fact that it's five inches, the size of the screen is really irrelevant as far as whether or not it is a tablet. You can make the case of that the, the size of the screen kind of determines what you do with it. But as far as is it a tablet, it is clearly a tablet, period. So, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, that's the bottom line. You know, it really depends on your definition of tablet and phone. But um, that's that's my personal view on it. 
Where it gets a little more interesting, I suppose, is when people ask, okay, is it too big to be used as a phone? Um, now, in my three months of using this thing, uh, I can clearly say uh, it is not too big to be used as a phone. For me. Uh, <coughs> sorry. First things first, like, I have fairly big hands. Okay, so when I hold this, and you can see if I hold it up like this, you can see there's lots of arc here. You know, I have no problems holding this phone. Even if it was a bit, uh, a bit wider, I could still probably hold it. But I can tell you if it was like this wide, and I had to hold my hands like this, like, my hand would start cramping. Like, I can already tell right now my hands are like getting uncomfortable, stretching this wide. So, if you have really small hands, You'd have to have pretty small hands, but it is possible that you holding you, that just the mere act of holding this would be uncomfortable. Um, but assuming you can hold it in one hand, um, using it as a phone, I find it to be quite amazingly comfortable. Um, with my old phones. My background is, I, my previous phone was a MyTouch 4G, which is a 3.8 inch Android smartphone. Um, and I, I always had kind of issues holding it because I kind of wanted to talk into the, the mouthpiece, but I had, to, I, had to, I had problems trying to find the perfect place where I could hear the other person as well. So I always had kind of issues. I don't know why. It, it happened with even the phones before that, my old Nokia phones, I had the same issue. But this it has a pretty big earpiece, and when I hold it, the mouth the mouthpiece is right in front of my mouth, and I've just never had an issue. And the call quality has been great. So I, as a phone, as far as calling people, me calling people, people calling me, it's been very comfortable. As far as whether or not people will mock you for having such a big phone or talking to a big phone. Uh, I have not found that to be an issue at all. Uh, now I do live in New York so perhaps we're just used to anything. Um, and I have fairly big hands like I said so when the phone is in my hand okay it's not like it's super thick. You know if I walk by you know, it's not like it's blatant, I'm holding some huge thing in my hand. And it's black. <coughs> and when I hold it in my head, okay, whatever. You know, it's, I have black hair, it's, you know, I didn't think it would be an issue. And I've, I use it all the time in public, and, and like I said, no one, no one cares. No one seems to care at all. Um, so... I find that whole thing to be a non-issue. Maybe initially you're, initially you're self-conscious about it, and you're kind of looking around to see if people care, but no one seems to care. So after a couple of days of watching people, seeing if people were watching me, it just was a total non-issue, and I just, you know, it's not interesting. Um, as far as pocketability goes, uh, since I had since I bought the European phone, and and you always worried about you know if I don't like it how am I going to return it? So as soon as it got announced, I made a mock up out of cardboard, and I discovered that the thickness of the phone is pretty much the same thickness as two layers of cardboard. So I cut out, I made a cardboard mock up. And I tested it out for about a week. Put it in my pockets because I like to move around. I like to hike. You know, I like to run up and down stairs. I and I wanted my phone. I want to use this exactly the same way I use my old phone. Meaning, it goes in the front pocket of my jeans or my leather jacket top pocket. But 90 90 percent of the time, it is in my front pocket of my pants, and I wear jeans quite a bit. So, would it impede me? Would it be a, a hindrance? And so I made this mock-up, and I found that 
it was absolutely no problem at all. Um, and so I knew, you know, so I was very confident ordering the phone. If you have small hands, if you have tight pockets, uh, I highly recommend making a mock-up and doing a test. There's no reason to be caught by surprise, you know, by how big the phone is. You know, make sure it works for you, and and there you go. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised by how pocketable uh, the phone is. It pretty much goes in any pocket that my old phone went in. That's and for me. It's you know that I don't know what else I could say to be honest with you. Um. One of the issues that comes up with the Note a lot is how is it as a one-handed phone, and you know, can I use it? Can I use it as a one-handed phone? The answer is probably not. Not as much as you could your old phone. Um, it depends how big your hands are. It depends on what you do with your phone. Um, now, I have pretty big hands, like I said. And, you know, assuming you, you keep a decent grip. I'm going to assume that you, you don't really want to drop your phone. So, assuming you keep a reasonable grip on it like this. You know, I can probably reach, I should turn the screen on. You know, I can probably reach 90% of the way across the screen. Okay. And this little strip out here is an issue. Okay. If you have to type one-handed, uh, you probably want to whip out the new uh, Samsung keyboard. They just released a firmware that has a one-handed keyboard. It does not stretch all the way across the screen. And that's probably a good thing to install if you, um, you know, insist on typing with one hand. Otherwise, I, you know, otherwise you do some kind of cute acrobatics with your phone to kind of slide it over and, and tap the other side. But you can tell, you know, you're getting ready to drop the phone. Um, now, the phone has some weight to it. So as far as, like, whipping it down to hit something up there, do this to hit something down here, that's not too bad. So... Um, it's not great, uh, but it's it's kind of doable. I wouldn't do it when I'm walking around, but if I'm here, you know, it, it's okay. Um, but, it, you know, you should accept, this is a small tablet, okay? And like any tablet, tablets are two-handed devices, and there are just times that you will have to use two hands, or it's simply more comfortable to use two hands than it is to use one hand. So, you know, if you really want to enjoy the note, you know, it's like, don't fight it. You know, if one hand, it's, it's just too out of reach, too awkward, then just use two hands. If you have to use, if you find yourself in positions, situations, where you absolutely cannot use your other hand, and you're doing something, and you just have to do it right now, you, you need, you need one-handed one use, you're probably not going to like this phone. You know, but if you can tolerate, you know, I don't know, it, it depends on what you do, but let's say 80% of the time, 90% of the time, you can do what you do with one hand, and every now and then, you have to use two hands. Sometimes when I'm eating and I'm, I'm, I'm browsing a web page, then, you know, I eat with my left hand, actually, but, you know, I, then I'll have to stick out my little finger and hit something on the far end, you know, that's a little bit out of reach. But if you're just browsing, you can scroll. You know, you can do whatever you want with one hand. It's not a big deal. You know, if you get, if you get, um, I'm using ADW Launcher, and so if a notification comes down, I can just kind of swipe anywhere. Sorry, I didn't do that right. Oops, I'm just hitting the wrong things. You can swipe anywhere and bring the notification bar down like that. You don't have to reach all the way to the top to get that down. So. So I guess I guess my point there, what I'm trying to say is, um, you can reach a lot of the screen, and it depends on how big your hands are, and you just need to think about you know how often do I need to reach the opposite end of the screen, and how often do I need to reach, use the top right corner, top left corner, you know, and and if I do, can I scroll down, you know, if I say it's kind of far off in that corner, can I scroll down and hit it? You know, 
Um, and, you know, it's one of those things to consider before, before you buy this phone. If you type, and you type landscape, um, I do recommend that you get a tablet keyboard. It's one of those things you should try. Uh, usually if I give the, the uh, uh, hand the keyboard to someone else for them to type, say, an email or um, type their contact information, uh, I usually give them a, uh, a split keyboard uh, like so. Uh, this is Thumb Keyboard 4, the 5-inch landscape layout. And so you can see the uh, you have your letters on this side and your letters on this side. So when you use it, uh, they are actually, you know, quite nice and quite nice and easy to reach. In the middle you have your keypad, your optional keypad. Uh, you can still use the top row uh, to type numbers if you prefer that. I like the keypad in the middle because there's no delay with the type of password or something. It's kind of nice to be able to bounce back and forth between the letters and numbers. Um, so there's a whole bunch of keyboards out there you can try. Uh, you know, never forget that this is Android and um, you know, you, sh you should always try to find an application that, that works for you. So another thing that comes up uh, is, is it too small to be used as a tablet? Now I don't have a tablet, so I don't know actually if I'm qualified to answer this question. Um, I will answer this though based on when I look at other people using tablets. In terms of what they do, can you do that on the note? And the general answer is yes. Um, of course, usually I see people reading, and reading is very comfortable on the note. Playing games, and playing games is very comfortable on the note. Um, actually, it's great on the note. And it's gonna, you know, a lot of this is gonna depend on what you do. And I'll get, I'll, I'll talk about that in, in, in a second. Um, I will say that I have run some applications that detected the high resolution of the note and they went into what I guess would be tablet mode or high resolution mode um, and some of them are unplayable some of them are just not usable uh, I play The Majesty is an example of a game that uh, the text was so small that it would be un it was just unplayable on, 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 on this, this, this phone it was just it was just too painful to play. It'd probably be pretty bad on a 7-inch uh, tablet as well. But on a ta I'm sure on a 10-inch tablet it'd be just fine. So, another good example is the um, Amazon App Store, which right now is also running in really high resolution mode. And the text and icons are quite small. And there's some, been people on the XDA forums, and they're like, you know, I don't have really good eyes. And I just can't use this. <laughs> now the, um, the, the 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 screen has a really high resolution. So I for me I, I first I was like <laughs> really, but then it's it's okay. It's it's readable. It's usable. You know I have to hold the phone a little closer than I'd like to to get through it. Um, but it's okay. So if you run a lot of really high res high high resolution high density applications. Uh, I don't think you'd be too happy using it as the note. Um, as far as hitting buttons and links and stuff, um, those will also be pretty small in theory, um, which is actually one place that the S Pen uh, will be fairly useful, I think, because it's a point and it's easy to hit things. Back when I had a Palm Pilot, uh, which had a tiny microscopic screen, you can have some pretty high density stuff on there, but because it used a stylus, it was very easy to navigate and easy to do things. So I think once Ice Cream Sandwich comes out for the note, which is happening at the end of March, supposedly, uh, and we start getting tablet apps on, I think the stylus start, may really start becoming quite useful um, for me, personally. So, but I, I think in the end, um, it, it comes down to what, what you do and what you expect from from the uh, from from this device. You know, 
And I think it, before you get this, it's a good idea to think about what you do with your phone or what you do with your tablet. How much time do you spend doing what? I can tell you that I spend most of my time on probably on the web reading, then probably playing games, and then texting, probably then Facebook, probably then video. I don't take any pictures, that's, that's way down there. Oh, I use the navigation a fair amount. Um, talking is actually way down there. Um, if I talk, it's in my car, and I'm using a Bluetooth headset, so, you know, usually I get out of my car, okay, where are you, I'm here, where are you, and then, bam, I, I, I bet I spend less than half an hour physically doing this, uh, half an hour a month, probably, you know, I don't spend hardly any time, and, and actually, it's interesting, you know, I don't see people that often talking into their phones anymore, I think texting is now the way to go, I think, it's more socially accepted to text versus having someone sitting next to someone blabbing on your phone. Like I, I kind of, I don't like it when someone's sitting next to me talking on their phone. It's like, can you do this somewhere else? You know, I think it's annoying. It's just noise pollution. I suspect that for most people, you will, you will get this phone. Like, I think there's instant appeal. Uh, people who, 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 who see this phone, either you, you immediately kind of fall in love with it, or you don't. It's such an extreme device. For me personally, I have big hands, okay? And I really like my, my old MyTouch. Um, but the problem is, I just found it too annoying to use, because I have big fingers, and my thumbs they are kind of flat, and it was an issue just doing anything, typing especially, and just navigating the screen. Just found it very frustrating, very annoying. And I, I, I was always wishing, you know, wouldn't this be great if this was just a bigger screen? And so I went on a quest to find out where the biggest phone was. And at that point in time, the Galaxy Note got released. Announced. It got announced. And I ended up ordering it. Um, if you spend a lot of time looking at the screen, for whatever reason, web, video, you know, in fact, all the stuff I mentioned that I do, having a bigger screen is a godsend. The bigger the screen, the better. There's, there's no denying that. You know, anyone who says otherwise, I think, is, is, is kidding themselves. You know, you have more room to work, you can see more, you can hold it further away from you. I see people doing this all the time, you know squinting and you know hunched over squinting to their phones because it's high resolution but it's if the screen's so small it's just kind of awkward and annoying and I guess you can get used to it but when I look at these people it doesn't look very comfortable um you know if you have bad eyes you can make the screen a uh, text a lot bigger and still have a reasonable amount of text on the screen for you to use you know, keyboard, I have an obnoxiously big keyboard, so I can type no problem. Um, when you play games, the controls take a smaller percentage of the screen. That's the thing. Even, you know, the screen's bigger, but like the, the notification bar, and there's t it's kind of a fixed amount of overhead that you have to chop off the screen. So when you double the screen size, you get more than twice the working space, actually. And when you play games, it's quite nice. You know, your, your, your controls are probably in the corners, and you have all this, all this screen to actually see what's going on and play your game. Um, but the phone, you know, the, I just find the Note incredibly comfortable to use. Everything's easier to use. There's less scrolling around. The application page, there's more applications on each screen, there's more icons per screen so there's less flipping around. When you go through list, there's less, kind of less scrolling. Um, it's just far easier to use with a bigger screen. And it is important that it, it keeps the portability of 
any other phone I've ever had. You know, it fits in my pocket, it goes where I go. It's a 24 by 7 device, you know. And that's the biggest separator from, from this and a tablet, you know. Certainly if you read a lot, a tablet would be better. You know, papers, newspapers, they, they're their size for a reason. You know, it's nice to have a big thing to read on. But once you get to the point where it's you need to kind of think about how I carry this around versus throw it in my pocket, done. That's a big difference. You know, there's a reason that cell phone cameras have taken off, even though cell phone cameras are technically the weakest of all cameras due to the size of the lens, size of the sensor. But the portability and convenience of that makes cell phone pictures the most popular type of pictures to take right now. So, and the same goes, you know, there, there, there are people who use a note that stop carrying their tablet around with them as much, you know. I just live with the smaller screen. It's still high res, it's still quite, it's still quite pleasant to use, but, um, but it's so much easier to use that I'll just go with that. Um, Alright, so I, I don't want to spend too much time on this particular topic, but I have a feeling that people are going to ask about it if I don't. Uh, battery life on the phone, um, no complaints. I tend to be pretty aggressive about charging it. Um, I do tend to kind of use my phone a lot more than my old phone uh, because I find the Note to be more productive than my old phone simply because you get more information per screen now. It's a bigger screen. So, um, but it does basically generally last me a full day with no issues. Uh, when, w when you really start to take a hit is when you play games. Um, and yeah, when you're going, especially games you play during the day, you know, you have brightness full blast, CPUs going full blast, that's going to eat your battery in a hurry. And so, yeah, if you play a lot of games, you know, you, you should probably consider uh, bringing a backup battery with you. I always have one anyway because I don't, I don't really accept the idea of not having power to my phone. You know, I, I think a phone should be a 24-7 uh, device and I don't really accept it being out of power. So I always have a backup battery. Um, actually I actually have two. I keep one in my car and uh, maybe one in my pocket slash wallet or whatever. Um, also, I, uh, this is Super AMOLED, okay, so white uses considerably more power than black. So web browsing actually normally is a big drain on your battery simply because most web pages, a lot of web pages like to use white backgrounds. Um, my current browser of choice is Opera Mobile because Opera Mobile uh, has a uh, you can modify it so that it uses it flips the colors a bit so it, it uses changes everything to use a black background um, which is pretty cool you can browse a lot longer and use a lot less power with the uh, with, with with that there's some other browsers out there now that um, have night modes uh, that also do something similar so it's something to keep in mind it, you know the web pages may not be as quote sexy, but if you're just reading news or reading a review, browsing forums or whatever, it's it's great, you know. It's nice to not you know, have to drain your battery if you know, you're not really doing anything too graphically important. Um so yeah, no no real complaints about it, battery. I can pretty much last a full day. Um I pretty much tend to charge my phone whenever I can though, and I bring a spare battery with me when I need it. Alright, something else I want to talk about what is the, uh, the stylus. Um, I never use it. I don't really have much use for it. So it basically it just kind of stays in my phone and, and there you go. Uh, I did actually use it the other day. Uh -huh. um, but the uh, I think most of the time the apps, you know, they're designed for your fingers so the need for it is less. Uh, it is kind of nice if it's cold 
that you can actually wear gloves and still use your phone. That's kind of that's kind of nice. Um, the 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 pen, if you haven't actually used it, and you're still thinking of like capacitive statuses, um, which are big and chunky, this actually is quite nice. You know, in fact, writing on this is a lot like writing on with pen and paper. You know, it's you know it's pretty responsive. It's it's pretty nice actually, um, and actually. I had to write some stuff down on map, actually, I had to mark some locations and mark a route, and I used the stylus for that. It was actually quite nice for doing that. Took a screenshot of the map, and then I could, you know, do stuff on it. You know, when it comes to writing, you just cannot beat a pen, or a pen-shaped thing. You know, you could finger, finger, but in terms of writing, you know, a pen, you cannot beat a pen, you cannot beat pen and paper, you know, and, and there are still people in this world who carry pen and paper, and the stylus is meant for those people. Um, and basically, I think if you carry pen and paper around with you, then the stylus is quite, the idea of having, people probably carry a notepad that is about this shape with them, and the idea of having a, dig a digital substitute for that is quite appealing to those people, and that's who the market is for. Um, you see the gimmicky stuff they do. You know, they make a big deal out of marketing. I don't know how big the niche is for 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 the stylus. Um, yet, that may change, like I said, once tablet stuff starts coming out for the note. Um, I will say that on the, the forums, the people who use pen and paper, who feel need to carry pen and paper with them, they use it a lot. And those people, when they use to buy the note, they use the stylus a lot. You know, it's not like, oh, I'll use it sometimes. Now, people who use the stylus, they tend to use it a lot. It, you know, whether they're managers or they're... It te they tend to be freeform people, artists or whatever. In the end, if you're just writing down whatever... Like, if I go to a meeting at work, I'm going to have pen and paper with me. Because I don't know what's coming at me. It could be... It's not just going to be words. It could be diagrams. There could be symbols foreign language characters, who knows what's going to come at me, and, and when it comes to putting whatever I want on, on, on down, you cannot be pen and paper. You don't have to fight any kind of interface, you just, you just go. So, um, so yeah, so the idea of having a digital notepad actually is, is, is pretty cool. I do like the idea. Um, so, I guess that covers the review part. <laughs> I didn't actually intend for it quite that long, uh, but oh well. Uh, so some stuff I just wanted to mention. Uh, if you look at old reviews of the note, especially the, the, when old reviews of the international note, something very interesting has been happening. Uh, when it first came out, it was kind of choppy. It was not all that great. It was okay. It was pretty good. But anyone who, who upgraded to the note from an S2 was co immediately complaining, why is this so choppy? Why is this so choppy? Isn't this supposed to be the fastest thing in the world? And people were like, I don't know. And, you know, Most people were pretty happy with it, but some people using the S2, they, they could see. It wasn't perfectly smooth. Um, Samsung has been releasing a new firmware, a new revision of the operating system constantly like every two weeks every two three weeks they've been releasing a new firmware that and every time they do that so there's probably been like six of them five or six of them now they just released one a, uh, a week and a half ago and every time they do that the phone has gotten a little bit faster a little bit smoother and that was one of the big arguments people saying that about the S2. They're like, don't you remember the S2 was just like that when it first came out? And after two years or however long it's been out of tuning, now of course the S2 is perfectly smooth. You know, it's fantastic. And the Note is going through the same initial teething pain. So, um, and in one of the recent ones, they actually, I guess they were listening to some feedback, and so they included the one-handed keyboard, which is kind of interesting. It's a, a, a smaller keyboard that is shifted to one side, so that when you use it, 
you can use that without having to reach the far end. So that, in theory, should be a very good one-handed keyboard. So think about that. That was a late release. That was K KK5 or KK6? I don't remember. Anyway, that was a fairly recent. Not all. I'm surprised the AT&T one does not seem to have that stock. But I'm sure Samsung's going to push that through. Um, and as of K, uh, ROM KLA3, the note got significantly smoother. It's really nice right now, I must say. So if you look at some early reviews, and there's been some early complaints of stuff that I've not heard anyone complain about in a while. So um, Samsung's man, they've been they've been doing their stuff. They've been they've been they've been they've been tuning it. They've been fixing it up. So we're gonna, if you're gonna read some old. Like, there's some people who used to complain about calls because the noise cancellation was messing stuff up. There's a little noise cancellation mic on top, which no one seems to mention. Well, I guess I'm going to mention it. But anyway, that was apparently busted for a while, but they seem to have fixed that. I haven't heard anyone complain about that in a while. Um, so that's, that's, that's being good. Um, this is a fantastically fast phone. One thing that does not get mentioned. Okay, well, I'll go into this in a second. Compared to my MyTouch 4G, that thing took three minutes to boot up. Like, if you turn that thing on, it took three minutes <coughs> to get to the initial boot screen, which is forever. This takes like 30 seconds, so that's pretty good. Um, wi Fi connects take about six seconds to do the scan and, 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 and connect, which is quite fast, much faster than my old uh, MyTouch. GPS lock is fantastic, and this is, I'm surprised no one mentions this, because I think it's one of the best things about this phone. It uses the GLONASS satellite system, the Russian satellite system, in addition to the U.S. satellite system. What that means is, because you probably need around four, you need probably five or six satellites to get a, 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 a lock on your position. You need to talk to probably five or six satellites, and I think there's, there's probably 11 not even, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe 11 or something. Not, I don't think there's that many. Um, U.S. satellites. But once you put the, you used Russian satellites as well, available to lock on. Sometimes I get a satellite lock before the map is even loaded. That's how fast it is sometimes. And even under the worst conditions, I lock on quite quickly. Sometimes I'm up in New York, overcast days, tons of tall buildings, GPS lock can take forever with my old phone. And this, it has not been an issue at all. It's been fantastic. As a navigation device, using this for navigation has been incredibly great. In fact, my car has navigation in the car. I still put this, I still load up navigation and use this in addition to my car's navigation, simply because Google Maps traffic is so pinpoint accurate. Google map traffic is, you know, you're not going to get any better traffic, uh, what I want to say, traffic flow, you know, on uh, Google Maps than you will anywhere else. So, so uh, it is fantastic. Navigation is fantastic. And of course on Android it's free. So, so it's great. But it has finally come out, Corn on the Corning site, there's finally a link saying that the Note does have Gorilla Glass. You go to the Note's website and it doesn't tell you anything. Um, so, but it does have Gorilla Glass. But that doesn't change the fact that people are scratching their screens. Um, so you should be aware of this, you know. Um, I am pretty careful with my Note. I don't... Uh, I was not putting it in the same pocket that it had my keys in. You know, I don't put it change in the same pocket. And I was pretty careful with it. And yet I still got a scratch. A very thin scratch, mind you. That you could only see if you held the phone a certain way. It had the light bounce off a certain way. I was getting ready to put a screen protector on just for the hell of it. And I was, I was checking for dust. And I'm like, oh man, I do have a scratch. A tiny little one. So it does still scratch. I don't know if it's the coating. I don't know if it's because some people say that if you're using the stylus, which I was using a fair amount, 
to play games, actually. Um, and you drag a piece of sand across, then you'll scratch any glass. Um, since they're the same material, silicon. But, um, I don't know. But be aware of that. Just because it's grilled glass doesn't mean it's indestructible. There's been plenty of people who have scratches. I don't know what they're doing with their phones, but some people have no scratches and you know at all. I personally have a uh, if you put it if you put a um, screen protector on that has uh, like anti glare. Uh, be aware that it will kind of hurt the sharpness of the phone a little bit. I guess it's the, just the nature of glare protection, but it does actually make the um, stylus co more comfortable to use because it, it's kind of a it's not perfectly smooth I don't know if you can hear that and when you write on it it adds a little bit of friction which which makes the act of writing uh, a little more pleasant actually and when you initially it's, it's kind of very very slippery it's a little strange um so oh yeah Something that's not get mentioned that much. Um, the the <laughs> one of the biggest complaints about the Galaxy Note is the location of the power button. Uh, the the power button here and the volume rocker, which is here, and they are opposite each other. Which means if you're going to hit one, it is very easy to hit the other one, which is very annoying. If you're watching a movie and you want to turn up the volume, watching YouTube, you want to turn the volume, you end up turning off the phone. This will happen a lot because it, it's natural reaction if you push on one side of the phone you have pressure on the opposite side of the phone. And likewise if you're playing a game in landscape mode the power button, you know, even if you're doing it this way, I, I don't know, when I play I always kind of have a, uh, um, I want to wrap my fingers around the top so I'm doing a motion game and I'll just, you know, throw my phone across the room. But but as a result, it's so low and it's so sensitive that I'll just tend to hit the hit the button, and I'll turn the phone off in the middle of whatever I'm doing, which is like maddening. <coughs> so the solution to that is to get yourself a case. Now this is even a very this is the a Ring K R N G K E Slim case. It's a very thin case, but even getting a case like this helps a ton because what happens is now once you put a case on the oh this is a uh, for the uh, Tetrax X-Way car mount thing it's a magnetic thing that's what this is about so anyway don't mind that um, but now the case is slightly higher than the power button okay and this is slightly higher than the, the volume button. It adds enough thickness. So when you're holding it now, the pressure that your hands put is now on the case, not on. And, and it, you, unless you slide over, deliberately slide over and hook your way down, you're not going to hit the power button. Okay. So what I'm saying is, is when I first got this phone, I used to hit that power button accidentally all the time, at least once a day, more than once a day, doing whatever I was doing. Since I started using cases, I have not hit that power button accidentally once. I don't think I've ever hit it. So, consider getting a case. Even if it's a thin case, uh, think about it. Because that power button thing, it's, it's probably the number one complaint <laughs> about the Galaxy Note. Um, so, I think that basically kind of covers uh, the main things I wanted to talk about. Um, some, uh, yeah, there's no notification light. Not everyone mentions that. That's the one thing that I really miss uh, that my old phone has that this does not have. Um, also, I, 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 uh, I will say that the, uh, I'm not a big fan of these capacitive buttons. Um, when I'm holding it, I guess I don't know. I guess phones have had capacitive buttons for a while, um, so this is not going to be news to anyone. But when I'm holding it, I don't know. I I tend to brush them with the pad of my 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 thumb, and then I'll hit the menu button if it's over here. Luckily, you can flip the phone 180 degrees, 
and then you can still do whatever you do. If you do stuff one-handed, you can still scroll or whatever uh, with the one hand. Um, what kind of sucks though is, is as far as portrait mode goes, uh, you cannot flip the phone 180 degrees. It just doesn't recognize that. So if you're doing a portrait, you're kind of stuck with it. You know, there's not much you can do about that, which, well, it kind of sucks. Um, I think that's pretty much basically what I wanted to say about the note. Um, but it is an extraordinarily, like I said, extraordinarily comfortable phone to use. And going back to my MyTouch, you know, I had to go back to it to, to uh, get some information off. And it sucked. I was so unhappy because the screen, it's like half, it's basically half the size of the screen of the note. So it really, it literally felt like someone had given me the note and it had covered up the bottom half of my screen and said, okay, try using that for a while. See how you like that. <sighs> and it sucks. Try it. Try covering up the bottom half of your screen. And it's like, it's like, what? You know, I can't see anything. I can't do anything. It's, it's like, it, it, it sucked. It's like, how could I, how did I use this before? Are you kidding me? I um, so, uh, if you use the phone, like I said, you know, if you, if you web, if you read, you play games, the Note is fantastic. Having a big, it's like, it's like back, back, it's like upgrading your TV from a 35 inch TV to a 50 inch TV. It's like, it's like bring it on, you know. Um, it's, it could be too big for some people. Um. Like I said, you have to accept the fact that it is a small tablet and that you will have to use two hands sometimes. And if you're not happy about that, then you probably will hate this phone. But if you can accept that fact, and it fits in all your pockets, um, the Note is a wonderful device. It's just great. I, I, I will never get a smaller phone. Um, and uh, I suggest yeah, I, I, I think I, I, I think this, this phone's fantastic, actually. You know, I actually wish more people would come up to me and say, what is this thing you're holding? So I could tell them, you know. When that happens, the people are usually very excited about it. They're like, what is this, and where do I get it? You know, the idea of having a bigger screen, especially when they see me watching a video or something, or just reading, they would say, that, that, that does not suck. So anyway, um, those are my thoughts on the note. Um... Like I said, uh, when you read reviews, I do suggest that you put more weight on people who have actually used it for a while. First impressions are misleading because you have to get used to this thing. Um, and you'll, you'll learn a little about the teething pains that, that kind of come with the note. But they're not too bad. And so there you go. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to reply. Have any snarky comments? You can put them down. I'll be free to ignore them. Um, and if there's anything that you, any questions you have, uh, I'd be glad to answer them. Or maybe I can post a follow up, follow up video. Maybe. Um, so there you go. So uh, thanks for watching, and uh, give it a try. Check it out because it's it's really quite wonderful. All right. Thank you very much. Bye now.